Hello. 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 Hello, good evening. Good evening, thank you all for coming um, for this Zoom meeting. It's a training on how to use the zigzag tool to effectively and efficiently draw one, how to draw support and resistance levels, how to use the zigzag level to draw your T lines, how to use the zigzag level to pick up channels, patterns, chart patterns, and draw fibs. So without wasting much time, let's start. You can do this on your MT4. So um, I already have my MT4 set up. I'm going to use two charts. So in order to split them evenly, I go to Windows. I go to Tile Vertically, and it's done for me. I already have saved up um, templates. I have a plain template to put this on plain. That's to get rid of what is on the chat. I have this on plane already. They are both set to daily, because I'd like to show you something before I start. So you go to your custom tools, you scroll down, you go to your custom tools, or better still, you use this side icon, go for indicators, scroll down till you find zigzag, drag. This exact level, we'll leave it at 12. I need to show you something so that you can clearly understand what I'm about to do now. Leave it at 12, click OK. The next chart, keep the same zigzag icon. But instead of leaving this one at 12, to change the input, to change the values, you go to input. In depth, you change the depth to six. When you do that, you click OK. Now you observe to your left. If you observe, these two charts at the GBP, British Pound, USD, both are on the daily time frame. The chart to my right has its depth changed to six, while the chart to my left has its depth on default. If you notice, there is a zigzag indication pointing on this level but you don't have it on the one set to 12. So this is why it's always advisable most times to use the zigzag set to 653 so that you can pick up all the zigzag levels that are available or because you use the zigzag highs and lows to pick up your points. So now let's get into it. I'll minimize this and make this big. So how do you use the zigzag levels to pick up your support and resistance? We'll go, let me move back to the beginning of this chat so that I can show those of you the importance of your, um, the zigzag level, how the zigzag levels can help you pinpoint your support and resistance and the importance also of the support and resistance. So let's look at this point here. If we pick up this point, I use a horizontal line. If we look, it doesn't seem to be respected by price. So this support level, is not valid. We look for another one. And as you all know, a level of resistance is a price level above price at which the sellers overwhelm the buyers, preventing price from moving any higher. And a support level, let me see if I can find a point where price respected the level. And there's one other thing. If you notice on this chart, I can move this chart up and down. To be able to do this, I go to properties. I go to skill fix. This is the only skill fix you go to. Go to properties, common, under skill fix, you select OK. When you select OK, if you notice, the chart can go up and down, making it very easy for me to move about my chart. So let's look at, let me see if I can find the point where price a level became resistance so that I can easily show you. So as you can see, let's use this point here. As you can see, we picked up this high point. 
this high point here price made this high and dropped so we note this level this level we note this level coming property i don't know why my lines are not showing okay okay Okay. So we know this level, this level is at 1.6801. And this was in, let's say this was in 1999. So if we move forward, price came back to that level in 2003. And if you notice when price came into that level in 2003, remember this is a daily chart. The first time price came into there, there was a rejection. And as you can see, price rejected from that area so this level became an area of resistance meaning that by the time these buyers came into this point the, the sellers that's the, the beers in this point by the time the bulls came into this point the beers at this point were able to overwhelm the bulls sending price lower as you can see so this 1.6801 level would now become what you will call a level of resistance if you look at it into the future we can see again so it wasn't fully rejected here wasn't fully respected here so we can say that it was a level of resistance here so let's see if we can find i don't have my levels prepared i just move my levels on the go so let's go back again to the beginning of our chart which starts off from somewhere let me this level is a level of resistance. Let me paint it red. Then let me look for another level of. Um, uh, let me pick this level here. This level down here, 1.5468. Let's see. As we can see, it wasn't respected here. Price broke clear through it. And let's see what happens in the future. It wasn't really respected. So we can say this level is an area of support. One thing you must understand, the levels of support and resistance are not carved in stone. Price can respect them and price may not respect them. So these are some of the things you need to factor in when you're noting your levels of support or resistance. So I'm trying to find out if I can find any level. Let's look at this point, for instance. This point, for instance, let me see. Okay, I don't seem to have any recent one for now. Let me check out this area. As you can see, this area of support here, price made a swing low here. Price made the swing low here. Made the swing low here at 1.4244. And after making that swing low, price moved away from that place. That was in, let's find out the year that was done in. That was done in, um, let me see, 2010. And then fast forward into the future. Remember, this is a daily chart. We fast forward into the future, and you can see price came to that level did as if it broke it this was in 2016 did as if it broke below it and from there price moved away so now having to an extent showed you how to use some of this level and if you notice that same level here price respected it at this point as you can see played out as level of support twice here so how do you use the zigzag to draw your support and resistance levels it's very simple it's very simple first i always ask one question where is price you locate where price is this is where price is so my area of um my area of um concentration will be at this point and almost every other area within my chart as if you can see this is price price is currently at 1.3206 so this is the current market price cmp 
and I have some zigzag highs within this area. So I do not have to go back too fast. So what do I do? I ask myself the most recent high around price area. I have it at this point. That is 1.3384. The most recent lows, if you notice, I have two lows here. So I can either do two things. I can pick the most recent. That's this prior one. And if I pick the next one, I have it here. So I have what, what appears to be a support zone within this area. So having done that, I can drop down to my four hour chart. If I drop down to my four hour chart, that's depending on any time frame you're using, you can use weekly, you can use daily and four hour. It's not advisable to pick your levels of support and resistance on any level below the four hour to be on the safe side. So if I look at this level now, Remember, you look at where price is and look through your chart. Where do I have recent highs and lows? I have one here. I don't have any recent low for now. I have a recent high here. And that recent high is at 1.3311. I have that level picked up. So what do I do? I simply wait. You simply wait for price to get to that point. And if let's look at this point here, this 1.3311, let's see if it has played any significant role in times past. It's not always compulsory, but sometimes the more price has played around that level, most times the more important that level is. You can see price was rejected from it here, here. This was a break, a retest, and a move away. As you can see, let's go back here also. You can see that same level. So assuming we didn't see all this that has happened here, and we drew this level of support at 1.3311. You can see, play that support here, price moved away from it, price broke below it, played around it, price came back to it and was rejected. The same thing too here. So that is when they say a level of support in the future can become a level of resistance, as you can see it clearly now. So this is just very basically how to draw your support and resistance using the zigzag. It wouldn't take you so much time. And once you've done it, all you just have to do is you wait for price to come in to come into either of these areas and give you a price action. And for you to use price action, you must understand your um, price action, your candlesticks properly to be able to tell what price pattern you're looking at. And if you look at this, this is the four hour. If you drew these levels, if you did use this on um on um if you did this, marked up this point here, this swing glue here, if you marked up this swing glue, you can see immediately price came to it. Do you see the move away? As you can see, this is very, very recent. This is as at March. This level was made, uh, let me see, this level was made on the 12th. And when price came back to it on the 21st, price reacted from it. So you can see, this is what I call easy money. You don't need to stress yourself too much. All you need is patience and discipline to wait for price to come back to those levels. And once price comes back to those levels, you wait for a reaction there. You just All you just have to do is wait for price reaction at those points. So if I can also use, if I had, yes, this high and this point now. So what would we be expecting? If price comes up to this level at 1.3311, you ask yourself, what is going to happen when price gets to that point. So let me also use, pick up another um, pair. Let me use one of these crazy pairs. Very, very highly volatile. Let me use dollar gold. Because some people might say, ah, those pairs are not so volatile. So let's use dollar gold, the same process. But mm -hmm. you know, this is set to 12. As you can see, I have to change it to six, six, five, three. I click OK and I'm good to go. So what do I do now? First things first, you ask yourself, where is price? Price is at 13.48. 13 do I have any recent high? Yes, I have this high here. And if you look to the left, it was resistance here, played out as resistance here. I ask myself, do I have any recent low? I have a recent low here. Do I have any other recent high? Yes, I have another recent high here. I have another recent high here. So as you can see, 
these two points are areas of importance. So what do I do? I just wait for price to come up to this level. I drop down to my 4R because most times the swing high that you might find, a swing high or a swing low that you might find on the daily might be slightly different on your four hour time frame. So you need to be pretty much aware of that, except you're a swing trader, a full time swing trader. But I'm not fully a swing trader. So most times I pick up, I go down to the four hour. If I go down to the four hour, same question where is price? Remember, I said, if you notice, I can't move my price. I can't move my chart around. That gives me a problem when I'm trying to pick up my level. So what do I do? I right click on my chart, go down to the properties, scale fix, select the scale fix, click OK. When I'm through with that, if you notice now, I can move my chart up and down. I can play around with my chart just by holding down this cursor button and I can do almost anything with my chart. So when I've done that, you put the zigzag, change the settings, apply, don't zoom in when you're trying to do this. You need to zoom out. You need, most people will think it's like this. When you zoom in like this, you can't see anything. You need to zoom out. When you zoom out, almost all the swing highs comes into your view of your, of your um, screen. If you're using a laptop screen of like 15 inches, most significant highs and lows will, come, will pop up. So having done that, what do we now do? On my four hour, I can find out at this level, I need to readjust it. So what do I do? I bring it down to here. So I have it at 113.20.06. Do I have any recent low? Yes, this is the low from the daily, if you understand. But on the four hour, I have one here. I have a level at 1.29, 1.1298, as you can see. So this is a level I have as support. So what do I do? I wait for price to come up to this level, first level of resistance. Do I have another higher level of resistance? Yes, at this point and this point before this point. So what do I do? I note, I could note this level and ignore this level, or I could note the two of them. And when I have the two of them, I have more like a zoom due to their proximity to each other. So what do I do? I go to my draw rectangle tools, I pick it up from here, I shade this area. You just hold down and apply it. Then I know that this area is a zone. So what do I, how do I make inferences from this? It's very simple. And one thing you would notice, if you look at this chart clearly, you find out that this level of resistance was created by this zigzag point here. How? Let's say we don't have this. Let's move our chart forward. And the only thing we have is this high and this point. Most times when you're looking at your chart, this point is what you call a neckline. This is the recent, this is the lower low made after this one. So most times it's important. If I pick this level here, you see this low, you see it corresponds with these highs made at this point before the breakout. And as you can notice, price broke out, came back to retest, moved away, but not enough momentum to move up, price broke back below it. And then what happened in the future? Do you see how price rejected from that area? Price came back to that point and was just clearly rejected from that area. So that is just about it, how to use supports, how to use your zigzag levels to draw your support and resistance points. I believe if you watch this video over and over again and try out more examples with some other pairs, you'll be very, to be very clear as to what to do. And if you notice, I used these most recent levels are still valid. You can plot them on your chart and trade out the pairs. I've done for Euro, GBP, let me do for, let me pull up the Euro USD. Let me do that. Just my plane, what do I do now? I go to my indicators list, pull up my zigzag, add my zigzag. Impute, go to impute, change the impute to six. If you want to leave the color as red, you leave it as red. The width will change the thickness because if you leave it as zero, you might not clearly see it. So I always advise you change the width to say something like two. It becomes thicker and easy for you to see. Then when I've done that, this is a Euro USD. Go to my properties because if you notice, 
I can't move my chart up and down. I need to be able to do that to be able to find out my levels clearly. Right click, go to properties, scale fix, select OK, and move my chart up. When I do that, first questions first. Where is price? Price is out here. Do I have swing highs and swing lows around where price is? Yes, I have here and I have here. I pull up my horizontal line and mark this point. Remember, this is a daily time frame. Always remember to unselect your charts, to unselect your levels. One other system, because if you don't select this level, if you don't unselect it, you unselect it by clicking two times. If you don't unselect it when you've clicked the level, if you move this level and you come back, you don't know where you've marked it. So this is what I normally do, or I will advise you to do. You move your cursor to that point. When you move your cursor to that point, it will show you the value. For you to get that value, you go to your properties. This show object descriptions must be selected. Then I move my zigzag to that point. If I move my zigzag, it is showing me that it is 1.1176. I, I select the horizontal line, go to horizontal line properties, go to parameters, 1.1176. I click OK. You can see the level is here. There's one other thing sometimes. So when this happens, doesn't mean that this level is secure because you've done that. Then if you still move it, you might not remember where the level is. So you go back to the horizontal line properties, go to description 1.1176. Then you place it there. If you select this draw object as background, let me show you what will happen. You will not see the price value here. It will be invisible here. And if you notice now, you have the value here. The value is showing here 1.1170. So even if I move this line by accident, all I just have to do is note what I wrote there, 1.1176. Right click on the properties, go to parameters, put in 1.1176, enter, and it automatically comes there. So I don't need to start looking for where I moved it out of. Then the next thing I do is, this is support. Where's my resistance? I have the next swing high here. You can repeat the same process. I can put this here. Move my zigzag to that point, 1.1448. Right click, 1.1448. Descriptions. 1.1448, click OK, and the zigzag comes there. If you notice, if you look, the line is, the value is already here. So these are my points. After this, most times when you're looking at your swing highs and swing lows using the zigzag, if you notice, there's this swing low, but there's no other low down here. Instead, I have a higher, um, a higher low at this point. So what do I do? And if I look to my left, you could use the um, you could use the crosshair. If I apply it here, I can find out that to my left there is no other level because you must look left to plan right. That's what I keep saying in trading. If you don't look to your left, you cannot plan to the right. It's very imperative. Like assuming we didn't have all these points here, and we had only this low here. Let's look, do you see what happened? This low price came down to it, and from there, it moved away. So do we see what happened? In the same future, price came down to it and moved away. Only down here did it break it. And if you notice, before this point, if we're looking at it from our past here, we also have this level here. Let me use a different color so that it will be easy to see. So that it doesn't look as if I'm performing a kind of magic. You see this level here? If you extend it into the future, you see what happened here? Price made a move as if it broke below it. And before you knew it, price moved back high above it. And if we try and look to the left, we might find out something here. Do you see this area? See what I was saying? The same system. Let me get rid of all these. Um, if I want to get rid of all these lines, I right click, object list, delete all the lines. All the lines are gone. So, assuming I'm looking at this point, this is where I have price. 
I pick this point here. This is where I have price. My recent swing low is here. My recent swing high is at this point. This point here. I note it. So if we move into the future, do you see what happened? Do you see what happened? Can you see what happened? Price came down, didn't even get close to it, and immediately moved away. The same thing too happened here. This is move. This move from this point to this high was worth 445 pips. This move also from here to here was worth 181 pips. As you can see, this is what they call a trap. This is what they call um, a bear trap. Have you noticed? Price broke below it, giving the impression that this level has been broken. I always tell people, whenever a level, be it resistance or supply, be it resistance or support is broken, you must always wait for the retest. This level broke, came back to this point, and was this point was support. As price broke below it, it's supposed to act as a resistance in the future. And when price came back to it, price was not rejected. Price closed back above it. So anybody who sold on this candle is already trapped. As you can see, price came down there. It then acted as support. And from there, you notice price broke away. The same thing too happened here. The same thing too happened here. So as you can see, people are being trapped at this point. Now, price is at that same level. Where did we get that level from? We got that level from this point. So as you can see, you can see how price has been playing around that level. So once you know this, a lot of things becomes very easy for you. And you notice we still have this level here. Let me pull back the line. Sorry. Move on, select object as background so that I can see it at the end. And if you notice, price came down. This level here, 1.1117, it hasn't been touched by price. And since it hasn't been touched by price, it is a potential level of support should price come down there. So assuming now price made this, and we don't have all this playing out yet, I could easily pick my same level, note this point. And if I move it forward, do you see where price came to? Drop down to this point and move away from it. So noting this, I have my levels of support already down here. I go down. This is my level of resistance, as you can see. I have another higher. If I didn't have these highs, I could have used this place as my level of resistance prior to this. But since I have other higher highs, I can pick this point. And I can pick this point. And you can see, I'm good to go. By doing this, I'm already good to go. Clearly good to go. So this is how you use your zigzag to draw your support and resistance levels. The next point we'll be going to is how to use the zigzag to draw your trend lines. Let me get rid of all this. Get rid of all this. Get rid of all these lines. So I go down to my daily. If you notice, for you to draw a trend line, a resistance trend line, you need a high and a lower high. No, you need a high, yes, and a lower high to draw a falling um, resistance trend line. For you to successfully draw a support trend line, you need a low and a higher low. When you're drawing trend lines, you must not have anything between your low and your higher low. Assuming now you have this point down here, you would not jump, you would not connect from here and jump to this place, ignoring this point. No. So if I'm looking at this chart to draw my rising support trend line, I go from here. You see, I'm using the zigzag, it's already done the job for me, and I take it up to this point. Do you see it? As long as this trend is intact, price is clearly in an uptrend. So this is for support. Then let me look for a resistance trend line. We have a high here. 
left, right, he is the highest. We have a lower high here. Left, right, he is the highest. There's nobody near him. So we pick this point, pinpointed by the zigzag, and this other point. You go to the trend line, trend line two. You pick this point and you drag it to this point. You see what happened? Assuming we don't have this, we only drew these two points. Remember, this is a daily time frame. And we move, we drew it. You see, price came here. You need two points, then you watch for the third point. Price came very close to it and moved away. The same thing too. By the time price came to it the third time, it did a false break above, close back below. And after that, what happened to price? Price fell through. As you can see, the trend line does work. Pick this point. So now, do I have a support trend line? Because sometimes you might be confused. Okay, this is my low. Do I have another uh, um, trend line? There's what they call a rising trend line support and a falling trend line support. To draw a falling trend line support, most times is where you have something like we call a channel. So in this case, this is my um, this is my low. I don't have any other low nearby until somewhere here. So, but does that mean there is no? I can't draw a support trend line. I can't. I have this low here, and I have this higher. I could do this. Could pick this point and extend it to this point. And if I do this, if you understand your chart patterns, this is a wedge pattern. This is a wedge pattern. If you understand your chart patterns very, very well, this is a wedge pattern. So what does that mean? There is the potential that should price come down to this level, it may move to the upside, as you can see. Or if I didn't want to do this, I could easily have done this. Let me get rid of this. I go back. I have this low here. And I have this higher low here. And I also have here. So I could pick this point, connect it to this other point. That means pick this point, pinpoint this other area. And if you notice, assuming that has not played out, I only have these two points to work with. What happened when price came there? Price moved away from it. So as you can see, one, two. You wait for the third one. By the time price came there, price moved away to it. Where did price go up to? This falling resistance trend line. And as you can see, these two areas, if you plot them well, they give you something like a sort of a channel. So that's how to use your zigzag to help you pinpoint the most accurate trend lines. And if you notice, this is what I was saying then. Assuming now you want to draw this trend line, because they say trend line, trend line, you have this low here. You don't jump this middle point and come here. You don't come and say, this is it. Um, you jump this point and say, ah, this is the trend line. No, you don't do that. There must be nothing between point one to point two. So if as there is this point, I would note this point two. And did the market respect it? Yes. The market respected it. The market came down to it. And from there, the market moved away. The market moved away. So as you can see, it's very, very clear and easy to use. So I get rid of all this. I've showed you how to use the zigzag to draw your support and resistance trend lines. I've showed you how to use the zigzag to draw your um, trend lines, both normal trend lines. But so let me show you how to use your zigzag to draw your channels. It's almost the same principle, but there's a different tool I use to do that. I use on the MT4, I use the equidistance channel. That's what I use. So, and the channel, sometimes the channel operates on two highs, one low. What do I mean? I've, let me pick this equidistance channel too. I have this high here. 
these two highs can play out. I pick this high, I pick this high. Assuming this is my channel, I make sure I pick this high here and this point because these are the two points. I don't have that luxury down here. So after doing that, I take this point because the two lines, they can move, sorry. The two lines can move. I pick this lower one and put it here. So do you see my channel? This is how you draw a falling channel. So price made this high, came down here, made this loop, made this high. And you can see that is what happened here. And also this place. So also you can have a channel in a channel. How? We have this point here. I can pick up another channel, connect these two points here. And see price is still playing out. Pick up this loop. I can either use this point or this middle point, either of them. And if you notice, this is a channel in a channel. Do you see it? Let me get this well. Let me get there. Lose very. Oh, Do you see it? This is this is what you call textbook channel. Textbook falling channel. Do you see it? This is what you call textbook channel. You use these two, you use this point and this point. Then you either pick this point or this point because, assuming when you were drawing it, you have something like this. You have something like this. The part in front has not played out. You only use this loop, you only use this point. So, as you can see, when price came there, you then had points too. What happened when price moved up? It didn't get to that point, but it came down here and bounced and came up to this point. You see, this is a trap. This is what you call a trap move. What is a trap move? The market makes a move as if it has broken above, or most people will say it has broken, it has broken above. Ah, I should buy. Don't do this. You should always wait for a break, a retest, and a move higher. Price broke above, but what did they do? They broke close back below the trend line. The next candle is not supposed to close back inside the trend line. So anybody who bought at this high is already in trouble because price has moved away. And what is price doing now? Price is moving back into that channel. So how do you combine your channel and your support and resistance? It's very simple. Like here. Oh, I might not be able to handle fibs and chat patterns. So I'm almost running out of time. So, like on this point, how do you combine the two? Very simple. I go down to my four hour because on my daily, my most recent high is here. This point. My most recent low is here at this point, and I also have another low at this point why am i taking this point into cognizance price broke through came back above this level is still support it was not breached it was only breached but price did not stay below him so he's still active there's a tendency that if price comes down to it he may bounce price back up so i go down to my four hour i go down to my four hour what do i do Go down to my four hour. What other level do I have? I have this point here, but price is below it, so I won't pay attention to this man. Or if you want to, you can pick him. And as you can, if you pick him, if you notice, price is playing support there. Price is refusing to close below this 1.2992. So this is just pretty, pretty simple. So if I do this, this line. At 1.1234, I would need to readjust it. Why? Because I have a low here. I could put this point here and I'm good to go. So basically, this is your if you copy this chart, you can use this chart to trade your um your um euro USD next week. This is just your game plan for next week. Very, very simple. So that is it for today. How to use the zigzag to draw your support and resistance levels, and how to also use the zigzag to draw your trend lines and your channels. 
I will try to make another video on how to use the zigzag to pinpoint your fib levels and also your chart patterns. Thank you all for coming and wish you all a beautiful weekend ahead. Thank you.